So today, we got a part two video of Young and Ace and Julio Fulio, the most of money rappers, made by Rap Daily. You know, um, I said yesterday, if y'all wanted me to see me continue this video, then I'll just drop part one and part two. And a few of the comments said they did, you know. Um, so without further ado, let's continue. If you haven't already, check out part one. But let's continue this video. And Ace were both implicated in that robbery seven months before was going on. firearm. In fact, Deontra and Youngin Ace were both implicated in that robbery seven months before Brown's murder, where the two conspired to rob someone who was reportedly selling weed. Shots were fired into that home, nearly missing a couple and a one-year-old child. After his arrest, Ace pleaded no contest. This connection between Zion Brown's killer and Youngin Ace intensified the rivalry and took it to new heights. The police, armed with this information, launched a manhunt for Thomas. Then, the next evening, around 8.30 near Butler Boulevard and Belfort Road, the search came to an end. Deontre Thomas was arrested. He was charged with one count of murder for the death of Zion Brown and two counts of attempted murder for the injuries inflicted upon the two girls. However, the story didn't end with Fulio's affiliate's death, as Zion Brown's family were forced to move out of the house for fear of retaliation after Brown's sister snitched. All this happened in 2017, and over the next few months, Fulio... I heard about Shout Brandy out to first... The ads, bro. I was in Gotta say that. seventh grade. The reason why I liked it, because everyone else liked Julio and KTA were silently planning their biggest score, and this time, they wanted the top dog, Young Gene Ace. In June 2018, Julio and his gang struck just three... So if you haven't already, in part one, I was just asking, like, how does Rap Daily know all this information? Is it public knowledge, or... Because a lot of... Like I was saying in the first one, a lot of these clips, I don't know if they're from the actual scene or not, but this is just crazy. But anyways before the deadly shooting, Ace took to social media to post this photo with an ominous caption. Little did he know that only a few days later, he would be fighting for his life while his closest friends and brother would lose theirs. On a warm summer evening, the city of Jacksonville was bustling with the usual Floridian nightlife. Among the revelers was Jungin Ace, who was out to celebrate a special occasion. June 5th marked the birthday of his younger brother, Trayvon Bullard, and the night was meant to be a joyous gathering. Alongside them were close friends Royale Devon Smith Jr. and Jacoby Deshad Group. Both of whom shared their enthusiasm for the night ahead. The group chose a local favorite spot for the birthday dinner, a place where laughter and music filled the air, and the worries of the outside world seemed to melt away. As the evening progressed, the tight-knit group enjoyed the camaraderie and the celebration of life. Little did they know that the night would take an unimaginable turn. After the dinner, the four young men left the venue, their spirits high and their hearts full of the evening's festivities. They settled into their Chevrolet, ready to continue their night elsewhere. But as they pulled away, Way, the unexpected horror unfolded in mere moments. A car, nondescript and seemingly out of nowhere, approached their vehicle. Without warning or provocation, the night air was pierced by the sound of gunfire. The Chevrolet, once a vessel of celebration, became a target as it was showered with bullets in a relentless attack. Young Gene Ace, amidst the chaos, made a split-second decision fueled by instinct and brotherly love. He leaned over in a desperate attempt to shield his friend in the driver's seat, risking his own life in the process. Tragically, his efforts were in vain, and the driver, along with two other passengers succumbed to their injuries. The hospital became Ace's new battleground, where he fought not just for recovery, but for dignity. In a shocking turn of events, he was expelled from the medical facility, his lack of insurance deemed more significant than his critical injury. Meanwhile, Ace's legal troubles compounded when it was discovered that earlier on the day of the shooting, the group had visited a gun shop on University Boulevard. Video evidence from the store led to Ace being charged with a probation violation for firearm involvement. Facing the aftermath of the shooting and the legal repercussions Cushions of his actions, Ace surrendered to authority. Bro, not only did he just lose literally his brothers, he got kicked out of the hospital, arrested for being around guns while he's still recovering from being shot himself. Bro, that whole shit, like I was saying, that whole situation is just messed up. It's just, it's just. 
with violating his probation from a 2017 accessory conviction related to an attempted robbery. His probation terms explicitly prohibited him from firearm possession, and the video of Bullard handling a gun was sufficient for the judge to deny bail. Adding to his torment, Ace was also denied the opportunity to attend his brother's funeral, a heart-wrenching denial of closure, but Fulio and KTA were not yet done. They went after one of ATK's rising rappers, Boss Goon, in yet another mass shooting. In the early hours of a January... Bro, whoever that judge was didn't have a, a, a drop of mercy, a drop of grace at all, a drop of compassion. It was just like, nah, which is crazy. That's just, it's just, man. In 2019, the streets of Jacksonville, Florida became the stage for a brutal and shocking act of violence that would send ripples through the community and the rap world. Willie Addison Jr., better known by his stage name Boss Goon, along with five others, fell victim to a merciless drive-by shooting that left the city in disbelief. On a fateful night in Jacksonville, the air was thick with anticipation as local rap enthusiasts gathered at Paradise Gentlemen's Club on Bay Meadows Road. Among the crowd was 25-year-old Boss Goon, fresh out of prison and eager to make his mark on the scene. He had completed a six-year stint for burglary and perjury convictions only six months prior. As the night waned, Addison and his entourage decided to call it an evening. They piled into a silver Chevrolet Tahoe, unaware that this ride would be their last together. The clock struck two in the morning as they made their way along Emerson Street, near the intersection of Spring Park Road. Boss Goon and his group were unaware that surveillance cameras at Wacko's Gentlemen's Club were documenting a sinister plot unfolding. The footage, later scrutinized by law enforcement, showed two vehicles with an ominous presence tailing the Tahoe. It was here that the unexpected horror unfolded. A vehicle pulled up alongside the Tahoe. Without warning, the quiet of the night was shattered by a barrage of gunfire, a relentless assault that turned the Tahoe into a scene of chaos and despair. In the aftermath, the Tahoe, riddled with bullets and carrying the weight of tragedy, raced to Memorial Hospital. Boss Goon, who, despite the frantic efforts of medical professionals, was pronounced <coughs> dead, his life cut short in an instant of senseless violence. Family members of ATK rapper K-So, whose name really is Hakeem Robinson were injured in the shooting, including his father, Adbull Robinson, who was shot in the back. This incident led K so into a murder. Now these two, they they these faces have been everywhere on social media. You know. And not for good reasons. I'ma just say that. Not for good reasons. I don't know every detail about what they got going on, but the stuff that I see personally is just is just not good. Rage, where he relentlessly terrorized his ops, and it was an eye for an eye as ATK went after their rival's rappers. One of the rappers whose life was claimed was none other than the fast-rising Rico Osama, the Jacksonville war zone. On a day that began like any other, the west side of Jacksonville became the scene of a triple shooting, an event that claimed lives and left the city in mourning. Among the victims was a name well known in the local rap scene, Rico Osama, whose music echoed the streets he called home. It was in the late afternoon when the sound of gunfire shattered the usual hum of activity along San Juan Avenue and Jams Road, a location known for its vibrant energy and the hustle of daily life. But on this fateful day, the area would become the backdrop for a troubling incident that would end the life of an up-and-coming artist. Rico Osama, whose real name was Easy sounds in here. Julian House. Rico Osama, a name that was just beginning to make waves in the music industry as an affiliate of the well-known rapper Julio Fulio, found himself at the center of a violent altercation. Did he just say Julio Fulio? Yeah, I, I think he's doing it on purpose. At this point, y'all, y'all let me know. Is he doing his own purpose? He got to be doing it on purpose at this point. Because he'll say it right and then he'll say it wrong. So it's like... <laughs> Witnesses know, described the chaos that ensued as approximately 30 gunshots rang out, echoing off the storefronts and sending bystanders into a state of panic. In the video, you see a customer leaving a store before hearing multiple shots. The rapid succession of shots was so intense that it drew the immediate attention of an off-duty officer in the vicinity, who promptly alerted the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office to the unfolding crisis. The officers responded with urgency, rushing to the scene at 6300 San Juan Avenue, where they were met with a sight of devastation. There 
there they discovered three adult males, victims of the shooting, their bodies bearing the brutal marks of the attack. The parking lot of the business plaza was littered with shell casings. The air was thick with tension and fear as the reality of what had occurred began to sink in. One business owner, whose establishment faced the brunt of the violence, recounted the terror of the moment. He spoke of how at least one bullet had pierced through the walls of his business, striking a refrigerator and leaving a chilling reminder of the narrow escape from what could have been an even greater loss. The plaza building itself and several parked cars were riddled with bullet holes, a silent witness to the ferocity of the attack. One individual had been killed and two others sustained injuries severe enough to require immediate medical attention. One of the victims dropped to the sidewalk before crawling into the store. Luckily, EMS arrived in time to save his life. The victims were swiftly transported to the hospital. Unfortunately, no one was ever arrested for the murder. Sadly, pictures on his personal Facebook page show him with his newborn child, born the same month he was gunned down. But Rico Osama wasn't the only rapper from KTA that was gunned down by Young Gene Ace and his affiliates. Another name that pops up is Charles Quentin McCormick, known to fans as Lil Buck. He became another casualty in a string of brutal shootings and was killed in what would become a drama-filled incident. On a day that dawned like any other in Jacksonville, Florida, the usual hum of activity at Dames Point Plaza was about to be disrupted by an event that would send shockwaves through the community. It was late Wednesday morning when the sounds of gunfire pierced the air, a brutal reminder that violence can strike anywhere, anytime. Lil Buck, a 23-year-old man with dreams and aspirations in the rap music scene, was in the parking lot of the plaza. He was an up-and-coming artist in the local rap community. At approximately 11 in the morning, the tranquility of the day was shattered. An off-duty officer present at the scene witnessed a drive-by shooting that would claim the rapper's life. The assailants, with cold precision, gunned down the young rapper in broad daylight. The officer, trained for moments... Off-duty witnessed it... it I'm not saying that he was undercover, but it does sound little, little, I mean, I mean, right place, right time, I guess, or right place, wrong time, I don't know. I'm not putting accusation on anyone, but it sometimes it just happens like that. But... Like these mm -hmm. sprang into action, giving chase as the perpetrator's vehicle sped away from the plaza. The chase was intense, the streets of Jacksonville becoming the backdrop for a pursuit that felt ripped from the pages of a crime thriller. The suspect's car, unable to evade the relentless pursuit, crashed nearby. Two men emerged from the wreckage, their determination to escape leading them to commit a home invasion just a few blocks away. In a desperate attempt to evade capture, the men broke into a stranger's home, held the homeowner hostage, and changed clothes. A Bruh, that's like a... It's like a plot of a movie. Fine ordeal for any resident to endure. They were even caught on camera jumping over fences and running through people's yards as they made their escape. Their escape plan involved a getaway in a red or orange Dodge Bro, Charger. Or ch but it's like real life GTA. No funny. No funny stuff. It's like the plan that they came up with in like GTA 5. Getaway cars. This is just, some people's life is real life GTA. A vehicle that would later become a key piece of evidence in the unfolding investigation. As the dust settled on the tragic scene at Dames Point Plaza, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office launched a full-scale investigation into the cold-blooded murder of Lil Buck. The city, no stranger to the scourge of violence, braced itself for the revelations that this case would unearth. The investigation was meticulous, with detectives combing through every lead, every piece of evidence that could shed light on the perpetrators of this heinous crime. The breakthrough came when Queso was identified as a suspect. His name was not unknown to law Law enforcement since he was entangled in a web of gang affiliations that had long cast a shadow over Jacksonville streets. The case was not just about a single act of violence. It was a glimpse into the ongoing feud between rival gangs, a feud that had claimed numerous lives and was now being waged through the medium of rap music videos. Tracked down to Atlanta by the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, he was apprehended and faced extradition back to Jacksonville, where he would join six others awaiting trial for their involvement in the attack. The arrest was not just the closing of a case, but also a statement against the gang violence that had taken root in the community. Many more have fallen as a result of the ongoing beef, and the gang leaders, Fulio and Yungin Ace, seem unbothered as they continue to release music and profit from the clout. Will the war end anytime soon? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes. When he said, only time will tell, he dropped this two days ago. I don't know if it's a re-upload. I'm not sure. But at the time that I'm reacting to this, uh, Julio passed away. I mean, it's the the rest is remains to be seen. You know, uh, 
all these people that he mentioned in this video is just, it's crazy. That's the only word I can come up with. Um, Y'all wanted to see me react to part two, man. Um, sometimes, sometimes you you have to react to or or just watch videos like this. Like one of my comments said, you want to see raw and uncut. No matter, this ain't about emotions at the end of the day. Um, it ain't about emotions. It's about the real spill, and we got the real spill, um, or or some or rap daily version <laughs> of the real spill, like. You will never 100% know the truth, but it's a lot to take in, bro. It's a lot to take in. And I feel like this, it could have went even further because he. this is obviously prior to what happened to Julio. Um, so if y'all want to react, see me react to even more videos like this, let me know in the comments it's below. Um, and if it's 20 minutes like this, uh, I might just... Not even do part one and part two. I might do the whole thing through. But we don't know. Knowing me, I might do part one and part two to all of them. But yeah, let me know what you want to see in the comments section below.